You may have heard about CRISPR before, and if so, you've probably heard about one particular way it could be used. My tongue-in-cheek response would probably be like designer babies, just because I feel like that gets a lot of the exciting press. If you're talking to someone in the general public, they probably say, oh, CRISPR is a genome editing system. I think people understand generally like CRISPR can be used for reprogramming the genome for like, you know, disease, for like therapies. Um, and people probably typically think of like, you know, rare genetic diseases or diseases like, you know, sickle cell or cystic fibrosis. And there is good reason for this. It's absolutely groundbreaking. It earned a Nobel Prize for the two scientists that discovered CRISPR. The ability to get rid of sickle cell disease or cystic fibrosis would be an incredible achievement. And the technology could one day allow people to design their own baby with whatever genes they choose picking their eye and hair color. But for bioengineers like Omar and Jonathan, just talking about gene editing overlooks a lot of other huge innovations that might come first, and some that already have. So what else does it allow us to do? It actually allows a whole lot. What is the single biggest application of CRISPR is I think a really hard question because there's just so many things you can do with the technology. For instance, this discovery could mean inexpensive tests for cancer and other diseases in your own home. There are ongoing studies on engineering genes in animals to grow organs that could be used for human transplants. Gene editing could bring back foods like ancient berries that have gone extinct. And these things are just the start of what's to come. The sky's the limit, I think, with how ubiquitous this will become across all industries. One big new possibility is to use CRISPR to fight bacteria and viruses. Antibiotic resistance is becoming a potential issue, I would say, because of course there are antibiotics that we now cannot use because resistance has become so widespread. Bacteria have this weird thing in their genome is it's actually a immune system. They actually have many different types of immune systems. CRISPR is one of those. Scientists have taken this capacity and actually transplanted it into human cells. In other words, we're taking the immune system of a bacteria and turning it against itself to help our immune system fight back against bacteria. And while antibiotics typically attack both good and bad bacteria, this would be a much more targeted approach against whatever specific type of bacteria you program it to attack. You can also use it for viruses that are typically hard to drug. For example, hepatitis B naturally integrates into liver cell genomes, and so it can be quite hard to get rid of it. But with CRISPR, you can come and actually cut it out of the genome and prevent it from uh, basically storing itself in your cells. The hope is one day, you know, you can deploy these types of therapies quicker than ever because small molecule drug development takes so long, but infectious diseases can really come up out of nowhere. We've seen with the pandemic, you've seen, you know, resistant bacterial outbreaks. It can be really awesome to deploy these drugs um, more rapidly. Even though CRISPR science is still in its infancy, it was able to be quickly employed to help during the COVID pandemic. While it wasn't ready to fight the virus quite yet, a CRISPR kit that Jonathan and Omar developed was used for COVID rapid tests. So already these things are, you know, be out there in the real world. In future pandemics, I think CRISPR-based diagnostics and therapeutics will be incredibly useful. While CRISPR sounds like sci-fi technology, it's important to remember it has its roots in basic biology. People weren't looking to find the next genome editing tool, but really just driven by natural curiosity of, oh, there's this interesting stretch of DNA inside of a bacterial genome. The idea of taking things from nature and using them in kind of new crazy contexts, CRISPR certainly isn't the first example and won't be the last. That's really exciting because it means that there's probably so much out there that we have yet to discover and that in the future turn into new tools, new therapies, new cures, and who knows what, but the future is very bright.